story to tell. The Confier F-102 Dial Dagger was an American interceptor aircraft constructed in the late 1950s as part of the backbone of the air defenses of the United States Air Force. Its main purpose was to intercept invading strategic Soviet bomber fleets during the Cold War when it entered service in 1956. Confair designed and manufactured 1000 F-102s. In the late 1950s, the U.S. Air Force requested design proposals from aviation manufacturers for a supersonic interceptor in the face of the new threat of the Soviet long-range bomber attack aimed at American soil. An aircraft capable of reaching an altitude of 50,000 feet in 4 minutes was specified by the 1954 interceptor program which could be in service in 1954. Conveyor's proposal, the YF-102A, was selected by the Air Force on September 11, 1951. Based on the first part Delta Wing aircraft, the XF-92A, the Delta Dagger became the first all-weather interceptor capable of level fly supersonic speeds and the first aircraft designed with all missile weaponry. The F-102's primary mission was to intercept enemy aircraft and destroy them. It was the first all-weather supersonic jet interceptor in the world and the first operational Delta Wing aircraft in the US Air Force. On October 24, 1953, the F-102 made its initial flight and became operational in 1956 with the Air Defense Command. F-102s equipped more than 25 ADC squadrons at the peak of deployment in the late 1950s. A member of the Century Series, the F-102 was the first supersonic fighter and Delta Wing fighter operational by the U.S. Air Force. It used an internal by of weapons to carry both rockets and guided missiles. It was not possible to achieve Mark I supersonic flight as originally designed until it was redesigned with aerial rolling. The F-102 replaced subsonic fighter types like the Northrop F-89 Scorpion and in bomber escort and ground attack roles, it saw limited service in the Vietnam War in the 1960s. Martinier F-101 Voodoo's and later Martinier Douglas F-4 Phantom Chews supplemented it. In the mid to late 1960s, Many of the F-102s were transferred from the Air Force active duty to the Air National Guard and, with the exception of those examples, converted to unmanned QF-102 full-scale aerial target drones. The TAP was completely withdrawn from operational service in 1976. The subsequent replacement was the Mark II conveyor F-106 Delta Dart an extensive F-102 redesign. Outwardly, due to its sharp clean lines and single-minded purpose, the F-102 exuded speed. The fuselage was long and slim with a nose cone assembly set at the back of the cockpit. The single engine a spire intakes were on the either side of the quarters of the cockpit, to which the fuselage ran the entire distance to the rear, capped by the exhaling of the engine. The configuration of the Delta Wing was set on either side of the routed fuselage, 
heavily scraped along the leading edges and straight along the trailing edges. The two edges meeting at the outer points. A single large vertical tail fin, which was essentially a third triangular surface, ending in the clip tip, caps the spine of the fuselage. The cockpit was a two-piece framing installation, offering sides, forward and above with adequate views. The rear view was primarily blocked by the raised fuselage spine, where any side look-down qualities were defeated by the side intake barrages. The F-102 was, however, designed as cardiac interceptor and not a true fighter, so vision from the cockpit was not a pure project requirement. The undercarriage consisted of a conventional tricycle arrangement consisting of two main landing gearlets under the wings and a single nose wheel leg under the floor of the cockpit all were fully retractable. The Hughes MG3 series FCS was given the initial production mark while later models featured the more advanced series of Hughes MG10. The Convair F-102 was powered by a Pratt and Whitney J57B25 afterburning turbojet engine, producing 52 kN of dry thrust and 76 kN with afterburner. The aircraft can reach a top speed of 1328 km per hour, range up to 1170 km, a service ceiling of 16,300 meters and a rate of climb of 66 meters per second. Interestingly for the time, under the main section of the fuselage, arms were held across three internal bays. These held lower the airflow outside under the aircraft and squeeze out of the design as much speed as possible. This also reduced the inherent radar signature of the aircraft for some extent. The F-102 was equipped as an interceptor with air-to-air -air ordnance designed to take down the large marauding Soviet bombers. It was possible to carry a total of six missiles on board, largely a mix of semi-active radar homing and infrared homing guidance tabs to cover the two most likely interception target scenarios. Provisions were made for carrying folding fin area rockets around the door panels of the two most forward-looking arm spies, and these could be used with acceptable results at short ranges against a large target. Through an additional control column in the cockpit, the pilot or fire control system could manage the weapons. The fire control system could automatically direct the aircraft towards the target. The F-102 was later cleared for the fielding of the AIM-26A nuclear Falcon missile in its operational service, which expanded its deterrent nature with the Soviets. Since this was the period of military aviation, there was a definite shift away from onboard cannons to missile technology. The series was never fitted with any internal gun. Drop tanks became commonplace one under each wing to increase the operating range of the F-102s. The F-102 served as bomber escorts in Vietnam, flying fighter patrols. A total of 15 aircraft were lost in Vietnam, one to air-to-air -air fighting, several to ground fire, and the rest to accidents. The F-102 saw limited overseas use only and delivered in Turkey and Greece. My video of F-102 Dare the Dapper ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up.
don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.